Hey guys, welcome to Radium TV episode number four. I'm Kevin Beggs. Bradley Denniston. What are we looking at today? Well, we got a little indie spotlight on Pilo from the Bay Area, HBK gang. Tech review on self-driving cars. Google's coming out with one. And we got Gear Talk, NAM 2017 in Anaheim. What's going on down there? You guys stay tuned. All right, Indie Spotlight, Pilo from the HBK gang. No, we don't really care. Yeah, we gon' put it in the air. No, we don't give a fuck. Getting bucks is a must, you can trust. We gon' light this bitch up. Kev, you're about that trap life, what's up? Yeah, Pilo, that's uh, one of my homies. He's like one of uh, like the few Filipinos in the music industry, you know what I mean, that are actually doing something. Yeah. So, uh, shouts it. out to that. One of the uh, songs Pilo's like really mostly known for is Act Right by Yo Gotti. That song was like big for Pilo because it solidified the bay to other artists. And YG, you know, that's an LA artist, but then also you have Yo Gotti and you have, that's a Memphis artist, you have Young Jeezy, who's an Atlanta artist. So you have all these artists, but they're coming to this bass sound. Yeah. And it just shows you how popular that bass sound got. It's, it's funny, because, you know, I have the certain lens being from the Bay, mm -hmm. but if you, like, turn on any radio station, like KMEL, Wild 94.9, like, all you hear is Bay music. You hear Pilo, you hear I'm Sue, you hear all these guys. Kaylani. Like, Kaylani got big. The, yeah, the Bay puts the Bay on, so for me, like, these guys are, like, Titans, but you know what I mean? So he started out as like a producer and he would make all these beats. So like only that real, you know what I mean? Like that's like a I am Sue classic. I am Sue's the greatest man. I love that guy. Yeah. So Pilo produced that and he like kind of has like the bass sound. If you think about that bass line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What like mustard Rolling, and yeah, totally. all these other producers, like that's where they kind of drew their inspiration. What is his uh, latest album? Um, before anything is his latest project. Uh, what's up with a freak bitch. Tight dress, no panties underneath that. Trying to give her that defense. It has the Pilo sound, which is those Bay anthems. Um, there's also just like anthemic rap. It's like these big like songs that you could hear like taking over the radio. Whole lot of drink in my system. Fuck my old hoes, I don't miss them. Keeping them lanes at a distance. Yeah, we making a big film. Yeah, we making a big film. Hey, big, big film, yeah. And I think he's gonna go really far because he has like a really good understanding of the foundations of what people wanna hear in rap music. And yeah. like he, he gets all those emotions right where he's like, you know, getting people turns up, you know what I mean? Like his music goes at the club. His, his outlook on the music is not just this small box of rapping. Like he has like all these tools where he can produce. Now, uh, Pilo actually has a really thick background in production and Probably where his ear comes from and all of his talents is the fact that he has spent a lot of time in DAWs and, you know, writing tracks for B.O.B. You will be mine, you will, you will. even if it's somebody else's, gonna have to run, right, right, gonna have to run, cause I'm your type, you know, you know. if you got the wrong impression, gonna have to run. He has like all these tools where he can produce, you know, record, and like I even remember, yeah, him mixing his own stuff. Being a producer, you have to do a lot more than you just you know what you're known for. So versatile. he's able to show his versatility. Yeah, absolutely. All right, tech talk. We have a tech review in self-driving cars. Interesting topic, really. There's a lot of thoughts about this. There's a lot of manufacturers getting into it. Um, Tesla, of course, being kind of, I feel like, at the forefront of this. Yeah, almost every major car manufacturer is behind this. 
And uh, you know, there's even rumors that Apple is working on self-driving car projects. General Motors and Lyft are working together to make self-driving cars. There's like, there is so much movement in this industry and it's really, you know, in the next 10 years, it's gonna become like normal for us. Our children will grow up in a world where, you they know. They don't know how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, it won't be like a joke anymore. Like that guy doesn't know how to drive. Get up my road, move over, let it pass. If it'll be like, no, you really don't know how to drive a car because they drive themselves. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, let's talk about some uh, some of the uh, benefits and also some of the downfalls of this. There there will become like this new kind of, you know, wave where not every single person's gonna have to own a car. Right. And that's gonna kill traffic. You're gonna have all these self-driving cars, you know, a lot of them are electric based, you know, a lot of them are hybrids, you know, we're gonna help out the emissions, you know what I mean, from all of our vehicles, you know, having less cars, taking that out the equation too. Like there's so many benefits you know, you're not gonna have drunk drivers that are driving. The car is always active, it's 100% alert, it's never intoxicated. So, like, there's so many things that are gonna be fixed and changed, and it's really gonna be a huge societal change. Self-driving cars are gonna kill industries just like Uber killed taxis. It's gonna kill the insurance industry, it's gonna kill car sales. We have to rethink how driving is gonna be. Parking is gonna be different because these cars are gonna park themselves or you could just send your car home. You know? Yeah, yeah, go home. Uh, yeah, exactly. Go, go take a nap. It'll change our jobs, our economy, our, it, it'll, it'll touch every part of life, change our laws, everything. So yeah, let's talk about some, uh, some of the uh, benefits and also some of the downfalls of this. Of course, the benefits are that we have, what, 1.2 million deaths a year. Worldwide. Yeah, worldwide from driving incidents. This is like the number one killer in the world. Like, human error is more dangerous than computer error. Like, exactly. humans will kill each other. Yeah, on accident. <laughs> on accident, Hopefully. yeah. yeah. So, and then let's talk about the major issues here. Uh, crazy um, road conditions, right? Where you have construction ahead. The thing too is machines, like they're good at analyzing, but you know, they're not human beings. Like no. sometimes a machine will miscalculate where it'll think, you know, mm -hmm. a car, you know, swerving a little bit is gonna be a car, you know, swerving in the lane and, yeah. you know, smashing into the car and the, you know what I mean? It There's been overreact. cases already yeah. where the cars have already overreacted. You know what I mean? That's already been a thing. So that obviously that needs to be figured out, but I want to know what the computer thinks. You know what I mean? You have a family of five crossing the street. You have the self-driving car with one person in it. Is it going to kill the family of five or is it going to save, you know, and save the one person or is it going to save the family of five and kill itself with the one person inside? You know what I mean? These are ethic issues that a car is not going to understand. But That's a human might, yeah. so. Well, I'd imagine a, a computer would just do the calculations, you know? The computer would just be, I, I imagine as they are right now, would just save the car. Yeah. Because that's what it's programmed to Yeah, that's what it's programmed to yeah. do. All this stuff is really interesting, but the technology itself, it's coming. It's inevitable, it's gonna happen. It is, and it's gonna save lives. Gear Talk, NAM 2017. We got some new releases. What do we got, Brad? Well, let's see. To start, Slate Digital came out with their VRS system. It's a interface, it's called the VRS8. Interface with eight mic preamps, uh, really nice conversion, uh, new microphone, the ML2. This interface actually has the preamps built in. Interface, let's see, Thunderbolt for Mac users and a HDMI. Um, connection for PC users, but it's great. It gets down, the latency on this thing is pretty unbelievable. It gets down to 0.7 milliseconds round trip. Yeah. At 96K. That's amazing. Okay, next we have the Lynx Aurora N, which is the converter that they've, you know, put them on the map. Yeah, yeah great, for. great. I mean, um, I think the Lynx Aurora is like one of the most versatile a to D, D to A converters. They come on 8, 16, 24, and 32. The 32 ones are gonna get you, you know, like upwards of six grand. Next up, let's see, Universal Audio. So a lot of people are kinda bummed about this because they just got the, the Apollo, right? You know, they're like, yeah, I got my Apollo twin solo, mm -hmm. you know, a week ago. And then they come out with the MK2. Yep. And the MK2 is upgraded A to D, D to A. 
uh, mic talk back on there. It can get four cores, you know, it's a quad core. They're offering that. And it's, of course, it's $12.99, so you are paying, you know, three, $400 more for it. Well, that's, they, they come at different price points. So to get to the same one, it's the same price point, similar to what they offered. But, you know, it's great to see these companies just throwing in, you know, bigger and beefier options. Yeah, so. and it's great. I mean, Universal Audio, everyone loves, and it's all over the studios now, and their plugins are awesome. Their modeling technology is amazing. These guys are killing the game. Yeah, from what I understand, though, with this new update, they fixed a lot of things that were kind of lacking before, like alternate switching between your monitors, yeah. uh, putting a talk back in there, you know what I mean? A lot of features that, you know, they should have had the first time around when they released the twin. So Akai comes out with the MPC-X, right? This is a little bit overdue, right? Touch screen capabilities. Um, they have a live one as well. So the X is kind of like their flagship. Um, I came up on NPCs. Mm -hmm. uh, producing, you know, hip hop on an NPC is the best, the swing, right? It was like uh, the NPC 2000 XL for me personally. I loved that machine so much. The pads were amazing on it. Yeah, these are great machines. Now the NPC X is out, it's got the touch screen on it. I think they're really trying to go for like, here's the live version, you can take it and perform a set, and then here's the, the MPCX, that's in the studio. Mm -hmm. But they interchange, you can hook it up to the computer or you can, they're standalone completely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's about time, but they're a little late, yeah? Next up, we have the Barefoot Footprint 01. Nice. Finally, I mean, honestly, Barefoot is a company everybody wants to get into. Yeah. You notice that? And they market like crazy. Like yeah. I, you see their videos all over Diddy, Instagram, yep. you see it on Facebook, you see it, you know, you got poll ads on the side, like mm -hmm. they're just going nuts. They got the sponsorship by Diddy. I mean, you see these guys everywhere and they're, they're now like getting into every hip hop studio. Yeah. I imagine that this was something that they were thinking up for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, you know, there was no like drop in quality. There was no sacrifice right. to make a lower price monitor. Really, when we're talking about monitors at this level, Amphions, you know, Barefoot. PMCs. Uh, Focal, PMCs, uh, ATCs. Yeah. It's like you're talking about just a difference in what you like. It's a taste thing. It's subjective. You know, one engineer says, I love the mid-range on the ATCs. Oh my God, I can't live without it. Mm -hmm. And another engineer says, I love the mid-range driver on the PMCs. I can't <laughs> yeah. live without it. You know, I can't live without my barefoot. So it's all taste, man. It's like, are you making rock and roll records? Are you mixing orchestral music for film scores? Are you a hip hop producer? You know, and you mm -hmm. just need your 808s to be like right there all the time. Yeah. So this is just a taste factor, and I think this is great. Like getting into this, you know, $3,500 for a pair of monitors still is not cheap for most people. But if you're serious enough and you want this as like your second pair of monitors, you know, yeah, you're good. Thank you guys for checking out Radium TV episode four. If you haven't already, go check out three, two, and one. We spent a lot of time on those. Also, make sure to check out the Spotify playlist that is in the description of this video and send in your questions to Twitter. We have a new segment called Mailbag and we're gonna answer all that. And don't forget to check out www.radium-media.com. Thanks, guys. <laughs>